How are you, my friends? This is lecture number four of pre-calculus course, logarithmic functions. Let's start now looking at the objectives. We will define logarithmic functions and then we will graph these functions. Now let's have a little introduction about logarithms. We know from lecture two in this pre-calculus course that the function, the exponential function, you see that one here? f of x is equal a to the power x is one to one. That means it has an inverse. To find the inverse, we can see lecture number one. There are four steps. The first one, replace f of x by y. I put here y equals a to the power x. Interchange x and y. So x is equal a to the power y. Now, step number three in finding the inverse, we have to solve for y. So the only way I can find y here, I say introduce logarithms. So take log on both sides. So y will be log base a, this is how do we read it? Log base a of x. So y here, log base a of x, that's a number. That's a number. If you put it on the power of a, it will give you back x. A is called the base. See, A here is the base. X is called the argument. This is important word. It can be an expression. See, this argument x can be like a bracket, x minus one, etc. A should be positive. X should be positive. All the arguments should be positive. A cannot be one. This is how we read log base A of x. Now this slide is an extra slide. <clears throat> I put here six examples just to show you how to figure out the argument. So it's not, this is not a question to do. This is only to understand how do you read the argument like. If you have a function seven minus 10 log base five of x. See the argument here is all this x. Now here, if you look here, the argument all this in the bracket. Here we don't have a bracket, you see? So the argument only this one, and this is a shifting down in the graph. So the argument here, five x squared. So the aim of this slide here, read it carefully, how to find the argument from the function. Then you can use it later for other things. All right. Now let's look at example one. Graph the logarithmic function log base two of x. Now this is a new function. So we can graph it by taking some points. Let's say easy points, easy points, four maybe. If I put four here, it will be two squared. So I will show you now the properties of the logarithms. You bring two down, so it becomes two. So at four here, we have two. If you put one log base two of one, it is zero. And then the graph will be the red one here. This graph is log base two. It will pass through the point one, zero. So this is a vertical asymptote, x equals zero, which is the y-axis, the domain. Always the argument is positive. Any argument is positive from zero to infinity and the range will be all real numbers. Now, we know that this logarithmic function is the inverse of the exponential. That's an important slide here. See the blue, two to the power x, we have seen there in lecture two. And this is logarithmic, that's the inverse. So they are symmetric with respect to the line y equals x. So the exponential is going up here, passing through the point zero one, and the logarithmic is increasing also, passes through point one zero. Now this is a little summary about logarithmic function. We have the increasing part. See if the base here a is greater than one, x always greater than zero. So that's an increasing, it will pass through the point one zero. It is one to one. Now if we have a between zero and one, like a may be half, one third, three over seven, two over nine, x always positive because the argument always positive. So the graph will be 
decreasing like this, passing through one zero also. Now let's see if we graph three functions, log base two, log base three, log base 10, on the same axis, what will happen? See, log base two, we just draw it normal. Log base three of x, if we increase the base or log base 10. Now later we will see that base 10, we don't write it. But since I did not mention it, we write here base 10. Only base 10, we don't write there. We say log of x, that's it. So as you increase the base, the logarithmic function in the graph will be closer to the x and also closer to the y. Now let's graph logarithmic functions with shifting and reflection. So we start usually, as we mentioned in lecture number two, we start with the basic logarithmic functions. Then you look at the reflection. Reflection, we have two types, either in the x-axis or in the y-axis. And then we use any vertical or horizontal shifting. Now, we have two examples here, and we will see more. f of x is equal 3 plus log base 2 of minus x. How do we graph that? You can sketch it if you like before you see the answer. So I start with base 2 here. See, this is base half. So this one increasing, this one is decreasing the starting point. So log base 2, we know the graph. And then there's a minus here in the x. See, sometimes we have a minus outside. Minus in the x, you reflect on the y-axis. If the minus here outside, you reflect in the x-axis. So look here, now the basic dashed log base two passing through the point one zero. This is the first example we did. Now we have a minus x, see log base two of minus, see this is my reflection in the y. So you take this graph and then you reflect it there in the y-axis. So it will pass through the point minus one zero. Then you shift the whole graph three units. See this point here at one, three units it will be at four. But the whole graph, see the whole graph goes up. So now the domain will be from minus infinity to zero open. See this will make the argument positive because minus x, what will make it positive? All the negative values of the x and the range is all real numbers. Now let's see the second one. We start with the log base half of x, which is a decreasing. You see this one, the black dash? That's a decreasing. Basic dash decreasing base half. And now we shift x minus one on the right. See this dash, you shift it on the right. So it will pass through two here the x-intercept. Now the domain will be starting from the vertical here, from one open until infinity, and then the range or real numbers for logarithmic functions. Now this is base 10. You see, I told you before, log base 10. We call it common logarithms. Base 10 here. Base 10, we don't write it. You don't see it in the books. You don't see it in the calculators. So it's well known that log of x is the same, so don't ask here, where is the base? The base is 10. It's hidden, we don't write it. So log of 7, like log of 10, this is the meaning here. I'm showing you the meaning. See, if we say log of 10, see log 10, log of 10, that's 1. Because this is log base 10 of 10, so it is 1. Always remember that. And if you need to graph the function f of x, log of x, it's similar to log base two because increasing, but it will be closer to the x axis. If you need accurate point, you have to use calculator and many points. Now let's see here. Come on, logarithm three minus log of x minus one. Directly we have to graph, we have to find the domain, we have to find the range. So where do we start? At the base. The base is hidden, that means Nothing here, the base is 10. And then see the minus here I told you on the line? So you make a reflection where? In the x axis. Then shifting on the right, one unit here, and then three units up. Let's see the graph. 
So this is the log of x. You see log of x base 10 here. So I said here basic is base 10. See, this is the black. That's the basic log of x. You reflect that, you see, on the x becomes the red one minus log of x. So the same graph, you reflect it. This is the red. Now the green one minus log of x minus 1. You take it on the right, one unit. See here, it will pass through. Shifting on the right, one unit at, at 2 there, because it was at 1, the red one. Shifting one unit on the right. And then you take it up three units. So it will be the blue one, the final one. Three minus log of x minus one. So where is the domain? Domain from one to infinity and the range is all real numbers. Now, natural logarithms. If we have base E, we call it natural logarithms. So base E. So we write log base E of x. That's natural logarithm of x. But we don't write it like this. So you never, never see this in the calculator or the books or the exams or anywhere. We write it ln of x. So we read it like this, ln of x. So ln, natural logarithm. So ln of x is the same as log base e of x, but we never write it like this. If you have it like this, you go back and, and write ln of x. But if you have ln of x, you continue, use it. So what is ln of e? It will be one. Because when you have the same base with the argument, it will be one. We will see that in the properties now, in the next lecture. So let's graph now, minus two plus ln of x plus one. All right, and then we need to see the domain range. So we have ln of x, that's the basic, which is e. See, I wrote here, just go slowly and read, please. Basic, f of x is equal to ln of x. So this is the black. And then we have ln of x plus one. So this graph, the black, take it on the left. You see this point here? Take it on the left, one unit. That means it will pass through the origin and now the vertical here becomes at x equals minus one now after that you shift down see this one here from from zero you shift down two units so it will be this brown whatever color here is the the function f so this is the function f minus two plus ln of x plus one domain will be from minus one we start from here open until infinity and the range is R. That's a nice question because we have f of x, absolute value of log base one over three of two minus x and then plus one outside. Now you can see that in lecture number three, lecture number two, if you have absolute value on the whole function, you try to graph the function inside. Then you take the absolute value, make everything positive. Then the plus one at the end, you shift it one unit up. So we need to graph this, find the domain, find the range where the graph is decreasing. Let's go slowly here. Now, I will take the function inside, just to make it easy on you, the function inside only, I will call it S of X. See the plus one, I left it, absolute value is there. Only S of X means log base one third of two minus X. So let's call this function S of X and graph it. Now forget about the function F for a minute. Here we have to rearrange the function S, two minus X. Remember I told you before, the coefficient of the X should be one here to decide shifting on the right or on the left. So I take a minus inside the argument here, and then x minus two. So I start with the basic. The base here is one over three, logarithmic function, decreasing. So it, the graph will be like that. Decreasing logarithmic function, passing through one and zero. 
See, there is a minus there. Minus in the x, that means we reflect this first one, we reflect in the y-axis. See, the graph becomes like this. And then we shift on the right two units. This one here from at zero, it will be shifted on the right two units. So this is the graph of the S. See this one here. Log base one third of two minus X, which is the same as minus X minus two. So this is S. Now we need to take the absolute value. Let's continue. This is S again. See the whole graph is S. Why I put two colors here? The, the part of the S under, under the X means negative. See the Y negative here. And this is the black positive. So when I need absolute value, I take the negative. You see the negative part, I make it positive part. So this is the graph of the absolute value of S. This is the graph of the S itself. So we draw absolute value after the graph of the S. Now let's shift now one unit up to get the function f because there's a plus one outside. So this is f now. See, we started with s, then absolute value of the s, plus one, so it goes up here. Now the domain will be from minus infinity until two open. The range will be closed one to infinity where the graph is decreasing like this decreasing from minus infinity until one. So we take all the values in the X. Now this topic, logarithmic function, this is lecture number four. It will be continued in lecture number five to see the properties of logarithms. So they're almost in the same topic. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, you can subscribe and share it with your friends. Just to remind you, this is lecture number four. It will be continued in lecture number five. Thank you again.